Hello, and welcome to the 19th Annual Women of Excellence Awards Program. I'm Tammy Killen, Chief Executive Officer at the YWCA, and we're very happy that you can join us today. Today looks a little different than in past years. However, we're still very excited that we have a program. Thank you, KQ2. More importantly, we're still able to recognize some pretty amazing women in our community, which the YWCA has been doing since its beginning in 1888. You're with me today in our lovely auditorium, um, which is original to our building, and our building is 106 years old. Our lovely decorations on stage are from Deidre Lee May from Every Last Detail. We are thankful to Deidre for continuing this tradition of decorating for us for our Women of Excellence event. Uh, I also want to thank Wings Printing Company and Portraits by Long for their help in making a lovely booklet this year. This year's theme for the event is It Starts With Us. This theme was well planned out way before the pandemic hit us, but it seems more fitting in light of our current health crisis and what's going on in our world today. Our hearts are deeply saddened and conflicted by the injustice and the criminal acts towards minorities. The YWCA St. Joseph is dedicated to eliminating racism and empowering women, promoting peace, justice, dignity, and freedom for all. When we started in 1888, our founding mothers understood adversity and injustice and faced this boldly. Now, 132 years later, we must continue to do the same. Our founders recognize it started with them and we need to continue to embrace this today. With their vision set in 1888, St. Joseph's YWCA sought to house women pursuing education and work. Going door to door in horse and buggy, the women set out to make their vision a reality and raise the equivalent of over $3 million today in only two weeks, giving them enough money to construct the building we still call home. The founding mothers stood and fought for women's rights and racial justice. Paving the way for us today and providing family resources for our community protecting victims of abuse, standing by them in court, providing housing for women and their children, along with mentoring programs, childcare, and parenting. In only one year, over 400 women and children sheltered, over 2,400 case management hours, over 3,700 volunteer hours, and over 1,700 therapy sessions. Giving hope and enhancing the future for our children and our community. This is YWCA St. Joseph. If you have been to Women of Excellence before, you know that Steve Craig has sponsored Steve's Challenge for the past 13 years. This year's event looks very different, but Steve continues to assist us with raising necessary funds for the YWCA and to encourage sponsorships with a match of $30,000 for those funds we will receive today. We want to thank the following sponsors for Women of Excellence 2020, and if you haven't given yet or want to give more, please keep in mind that any gift of $100 or more is eligible for the state domestic violence 50% tax credit. We are also very happy that we are able to continue the cupcake raffle. Thanks to Crumbs Cake and Cookie Design by Brienne, we were able to provide pre-orders for a delicious six pack of three varieties. The names of those who pre-ordered have been entered into a drawing. Two winners will be drawn to receive a diamond necklace from Kristen's Coin and Jewelry or a Botox treatment by Dr. Jonathan Amspacker. These winners will be announced tomorrow evening on Live at Five. The money raised through the cupcake raffle and sponsorships will be utilized to support important YWCA programs. Thank you for your support. The current sponsorship will be displayed on the screen throughout the program, and we hope to see the numbers increase as the program continues and when this re-airs at 6 o'clock. This program has also become a significant YWCA fundraiser to support our shelter for abused and homeless women and children. Today, we will be recognizing and celebrating 43 nominees. Although there is diversity in their interests and talents and skills, they are all outstanding, empowered women who are excellent role models. We appreciate their service and gift to our community. A group of women who truly understand the concept of excellence is our steering committee. 
These committee members consist of YWCA staff and community members. Our co-chairs this year are Leanne Leonard and Natalie Redman. These women have helped us orchestrate the many details to this event and help to make it a true celebration. Now we will hear from our very own Shelly Stevens, who not only has received services, but she's part of our YWCA staff now and a wonderful cook, I might add. Let's listen to Shelly's story and you will see why she does what she does today. In 2002, I left an abusive relationship, but I came here the day after my daughter's birthday. She had just turned 15. It was a difficult time. I had five of my seven children with me when I showed up at the door. And in some way or another, this place saved my life more than once, way more than once. My ex-husband that I fled from kidnapped my daughter when she was two and a half. I didn't see her for 45 days. If it hadn't been for the why and the women here, I wouldn't have survived. There's no doubt in my mind because it was because of them that 45 days later, I got her back. In the beginning, it was sometimes a little difficult, but I just decided to become a sponge and I just soaked it up. And so two months almost to the day, from the day that I entered the Y, I moved into a home with all of my children with me. It kind of sends chills down my spine to think of where I would be if they hadn't been here to help. Because I can't imagine somebody going through something like that without having the women and the support that I had from this place. Empowering women to me means that you aren't supposed to feel guilt or shame for coming here. I used to tell people, I never felt embarrassed when I said I lived at the Y. I never felt embarrassed when I said what I had gone through. Because if I'd have been the victim of a fire, I would have sought help. If I'd have been a victim of a flood, I would have sought help. If I'd have been robbed, I would have sought help. What's wrong with being the victim of abuse and seeking help? To me, that's empowering women, giving them that ability to seek the help that they need when they need it. The why is to give you the power to change your life, to empower women with the knowledge, with the strength, to realize the ability is in, within all of us. You just have to take that first step, stand tall, stand straight, and not be ashamed of what you're dealing with. YWCA of St. Joseph, eliminating racism and empowering women. Thank you, Shelley, for your willingness to share your story. In 2019, 611 victims of abuse received protective shelter, including 345 women, nine men, and 257 children. 296 survivors received advocacy and support services. 1,605 individual free counseling services were provided by the YWCA. We have also provided 44 teen parents and 37 of the children with services. 247 seventh graders for mentoring and served 63 children in our child care program. I really could keep going on and on with numbers and statistics but what all this means is, we truly believe that our mission is to serve our community. We take this very seriously, and we know it starts with us. Speaking of taking things seriously, it is now time for me to introduce you to our guest speaker. This year is Sarah Beth Myers. Today we're gonna to talk to Sarah Beth Myers. She's our guest speaker for today. She is the Assistant United States Attorney for the Middle District of Tennessee. And she is also the founder of AWAKE, and that's the Advocates for Women and Kids Equality. So welcome, Sarah, and thanks for coming on this long trip to <laughs> Missouri, because she lives in Nashville, so thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love coming home. Good, yes, and I know your parents are super excited, so um, I'm really glad that you could come for this. So, And also, we're gonna do an interview this year with her, but we're really hoping that she'll come back next year and be our keynote speaker, so. Uh, that would be really good. I'd be honored. <laughs> Yay, good. Um, so kind of just to talk about, you know, um, in the introduction, we talked about that you are the founder of Awake. 
Can you tell us a little bit about that organization? What is that all about? Sure. So Awake started about seven years ago, mm -hmm. and it's Advocates for Women's and Kids Equality. We started uh, in living rooms across Nashville, and we started meeting because we noticed that there were a lot of issues that affected women and kids mm -hmm. adversely in our community. And what we decided was this really is a systemic problem. And so what can we do as a group of women right now to address these problems that are facing women and kids? And we made a list. And we made a list of issues that we thought we could work on right now. We could do something immediately. And when we made that list, domestic violence was always at the top of the list. Tennessee is currently fifth in the nation in terms of the number of women killed by men. We're consistently in the top 10. And what I noticed at the time as an assistant district attorney was that I was seeing the same people come in again and again, and that cycle of violence would continue. Mm -hmm. When you look at the law then underlying that issue, mm -hmm. you realize that there are many gaps in the law. Not only are there gaps in the law, but there are gaps in our education mm -hmm. in how we address it and whether we address it at all. So Awake decided to take a two-pronged approach. We're going to have a policy and we're going to have an education branch. And so basically we formed our model. Mm -hmm. We can't have systemic change without education of our kids and of survivors. And we also can't have systemic change without policy change. So those two really have to work hand in hand. And that's what AWAKE does. We use both approaches. So is AWAKE, it's out of Nashville right now. Is it on a state level? And then are you having plans to at a federal level? Yes, so it is on a state level right okay. now. So we get ideas from everywhere. Mm -hmm. So our sexual assault bill that we had came from the Sexual Assault Center mm -hmm. um, that we work with in Nashville and Middle Tennessee. But our child sexual abuse prevention bill actually came from the Women's Fund of Greater Chattanooga. We get ideas from all over the state, from our partners and other women's groups and child abuse groups all across the state. So if there's an idea, we want to hear it. And one of the things I personally love doing and our board members really enjoy is traveling to places like coming home for me in this instance and getting a chance to see how other facilities and how other states are addressing the same issue because we can share information. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. That's wonderful. So tell me a little bit about your career path. Um, you are now the assistant attorney, um, United States attorney. So tell me kind of how did you get into that role? It was a long journey. <laughs> and honestly, like I, I didn't ever really see myself in this position until I was in law school. Mm -hmm. And I volunteered to do a street law program that dealt with domestic violence. And I went to work with survivors who were seeking orders of protection. And I came home that night and I told my husband and I said, I found what I wanna do. This is the problem that I wanna help address because I could, I could listen to their problem and there was something that I could do in that moment. Right. And so that really inspired me. Their strength inspired me. And I decided, you know, there's so much more that I could do personally. And that's why I went to law school, to solve problems. And so when I met these women and I was inspired by them, I thought this could be a movement. And it eventually evolved into that, but it all started with volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I recommend everybody do, you know, when you're in law school, when you're in undergraduate, but it starts, it starts when you're a child. Mm -hmm. And I did that here in my own community and you see the need and you see a problem and you can do something about that right now. We shouldn't be waiting. And so that was my original inspiration. But then when I became an assistant district attorney, I could see the issues and the gaps in action in the policy. Mm -hmm. And so we, AWAKE, drafted our first legislation within the first two months of our existence. Mm -hmm. And we drafted it, lobbied it, and got it passed mm -hmm. through our state legislature not knowing what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So I want that to be an inspiration to others in that even if you don't have a definite path forward, just start walking, mm -hmm. just start doing something, right. and the movement will grow. Well, you're kind of going right into our theme this year, which is, which is it starts with us. So you're talking about how we all need to start taking that first step. So with it starts with us, um, tell me a little bit more about well, you talked about your childhood, about some of the experiences. 
is that what kind of drives you or what continues to drive you even when there's adversity what continues to drive you I'm always looking at my kids yeah. um, they are my inspiration mm -hmm. um, and I think you know how is it now and how could it be better in the future um, what aren't my kids learning in school and when I hear other parents talking and this is men and women you know I don't want it to always be focused just on women there are so many dads who are involved mm -hmm. out there and we we just need equal treatment there needs to be equity in how we address the issues so we don't just work with young girls for example we're not educating just girls and working with girls Inc which we love working with as part of the why but we have to teach young men in how to interact in these relationships as well mm -hmm. healthy relationships and healthy finances all of that provides a foundation mm -hmm. for how we interact with each other in the world. And we have to be self-advocates, and we have to learn that. That is a learned skill. It's not something that you're just going to pick up in school. You look at it every single day, starting from when you know, you're crawling mm -hmm. to the relationships that you're able to observe in your life. And we all need inspiration, and mm -hmm. we all need people to look to to set that example for us and teach us how to be the good advocates and help others. Right. Well, I think that you're probably a pretty good inspiration to many people. So, um, and I know why you're a perfect choice for our event. That makes me very happy. Um, and I can see why Sharon Classic <laughs> um, was, Sharon. oh, she's wonderful. Um, but I could see that she knew that you aligned so well with, with, with what the YW stands for. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, tell me, you know, our mission at the YWCA is eliminating racism and empowering women. So what does empowerment mean to you? Empowerment is a word that we use a lot at mm -hmm. Awake. Um, we want to make sure that women especially are confident, that they are able to pursue their goals and to help other people with unabashed confidence. And that's tricky because in a system where, for example, women have only had the right to vote for a century, just 100 years that we've had that ability. And there are just so many gaps, policy-wise and education-wise, in terms of culture and society, that we simply need to, we need to catch up. Mm -hmm. And there's so much to be done there, so there are barriers to empowerment. And what we wanna make sure happens at Awake is that there's more opportunity to strip away those barriers and to allow people to pursue their goals in that unrestricted way, to have that confidence and be able to move forward through education, through understanding of relationships and understanding how they need to be financially independent so that they are not reliant and stuck in an unhealthy relationship. Mm -hmm. That is very true, and we try to do that as well through our case management and our advocacy. So I, I completely agree with you. Um, so tell me, how do you how do you balance all of this? I mean, you volunteer, you've volunteered since you were a young girl. Um, it sounds like volunteering is definitely a part of your life still. You have a amazingly busy career, which I'd like to talk about a little bit more because I know there's been some pretty high profile cases that you've been involved with, but. You're also a mom and a wife, and you have two wonderful children. Um, how do you, balance is a word that we utilize a lot um, as women. Um, we say that a lot, balance, how are we gonna balance it all? Well, how do you balance it all? I think balance really is time allocation. What is your passion, and how are you going to choose to spend your time? Everybody has a choice every single day when they get up. You know, what am I gonna do today? What is my day gonna look like? And it's going to align with what your priorities are. And it's easy to sit down on a couch, especially during a global pandemic, um, and just start watching Netflix, you know, or whatever that's gonna be, or, you know, talking to your friends on Zoom, porch meetings, whatever it is, but you can't lose sight of what your passion is and what makes you tick. And that is immediately how you're gonna schedule your day. That's how you're gonna schedule your time. So I make sure that I'm home for bedtime always with the kids. If I need to work uh, later or if I'm in trial, something like that, my husband picks up the slack. You know, my husband really helps with my balance. And we have that deal, you know, when he needs to work late, 
I'll pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're a team. And I recognize that not everybody has that, that ability to do that, mm -hmm. to make that trade off. And so we work out that schedule because of our family priorities. But I want to show my kids too, like this is how I, I choose to allocate my time. And I'm going to have these people over and we're going to have this front porch meeting. I want you kids to see that. And we're going to talk about child abuse. How can we make things safer for kids? They see these meetings happen mm -hmm. just as they're playing in the front yard, running mm -hmm. around. Um, and they know that we're working for them. Mm -hmm. And they know that it's important to be involved in the community. That's important to our family. Mm -hmm. And I want them to grow up around that and see that and hopefully someday emulate that and make their own difference and their right. own choices on scheduling mm -hmm. and what their balance is going to look like. Well, that's wonderful. That's very good. I need to remind myself that every morning. <laughs> that's very good. Um, tell us a little bit, like I said, there's been some high profile cases you have. The one that comes to mind for me is um, Tad Cummins, is that right? That's right. Um, versus the United States. So. Um, I understand he was a 53-year-old teacher who um, ran across straight line, state lines with a 15-year-old female student, correct? That's right. Um, so tell us about that case, because I know that that caught national attention. It did. Um, the case, when I first received it, you know, everyone is always worried in a case like that, that if the people are found, you know, they may not be alive, you know, when they are found, um, mm -hmm. and you never know where a case is going to go, mm -hmm. especially when people are missing. Mm -hmm. And so in working with the FBI, um, you know, that took, it took months, um, you know, from the very beginning um, of the investigation, and then over a year um, for the entire process to take place. But um, I love working with survivors, and that has always been my drive, you know, since that night that I came home, you know, in law mm -hmm. school and said, this is it, like, I know that this is what I want to do mm -hmm. is, you know, help continue you know, to work with these women who are so strong and there are a lot of barriers for them. Well, there are barriers that start out very early um, in childhood and in working with survivors who are so young, teenagers who have been through a very traumatic experience, you know, who may not realize that they've been through a traumatic mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy watching the evolution of that, of going from victim to survivor. Mm -hmm. And that is one of my favorite cases um, because um, I think it was a really just resolution mm -hmm. of how it turned out. And uh, the survivor in that case was very strong. Wow. And I really enjoyed working with her and making sure that there were resources that were available in working with our office and the FBI. Uh, everyone did a wonderful job in making sure that justice was achieved in that case. That's wonderful. It sounds like, you know, we can focus on the trauma so much and the injustice, which uh, we do need to address. But it sounds like what you focused on, too, was the hope uh, for her um, and being able to move forward and get strength. And um, that's pretty amazing. So it's a lot for a 15 year old to get through. Yeah. Too much, too much. So it was, neat. but she did. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, Sarah Beth, I want to thank you for coming today, for sitting down and chatting. Um, again, I know that this hasn't been what we thought it would be this year for a keynote. Um, I hope you do come back next year. But I too. think that you're pretty inspiring, and I'm really um, honored to have this opportunity to talk to you. So thank you. Thank you, and likewise, I'm honored to be here. <laughs> We will now hear from U.S. House of Representatives Sam Graves, and then our co-chairs, Natalie Redmond and Leanne Leonard, will begin the awards presentation. I just wanted to take a moment to say congratulations to the YWCA Women of Excellence winners. It is my pleasure to be able to recognize these outstanding women and their contributions to St. Joe Buchanan County and all of Northwest Missouri. Thank you doesn't seem enough for everything that you have done and continue to do for our area and your hard work and tireless, tireless efforts haven't gone unnoticed. You're the kind of women that I want my daughters and granddaughters to have as mentors and heroes. Right now, when there is a lot of uncertainty, your selfless contributions stand out even more. So please keep doing what you've been doing. Thanks to the YWCA for finding a new and unique way to hold this celebration and congratulations again to this year's Women of Excellence. Thank you. Good afternoon, I am Natalie Redman, and this year I had the pleasure co-chairing this very special event with my dear friend, Leanne Leonard. The Women of Excellence Awards process begins with a broad solicitation of nominations from the community. 
This year, 43 nominations came from employers, coworkers, school counselors, friends, customers, and family members. We thank the nominators who took the time to lift up these outstanding women and businesses to tell us their amazing stories. All nominations are then blindly reviewed by a panel of community judges who consider the achievement, sustainability, impact, and role modeling of each nominee and the final selection of the award recipient in each category. This is no easy task, and I would like to personally thank each of the judges for their time and consideration. We will now hear from Missouri State Representative Brenda Shields. Hello, I'm State Representative Brenda Shields, and it is my honor today to be with you as we celebrate the 19th annual St. Joseph YWCA Women of Excellence Awards. In 2020, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, bringing to fruition the dreams of many generations of women as they earn the right to vote and run for elective office. <clears throat> but we know that women are leaders in our community long before they earned a right to vote. And we honor these early leaders by the work that we do in our community today. And our nominees and award winners, they demonstrate daily what it is to live a legacy of hope. Congratulations to the award awardees and nominees for the Women of Excellence Award, and thank you for everything that you do for our community. Hi, I'm Governor Mike Parson. And on the behalf of all Missourians, I want to congratulate the YWCA of St. Joseph's 2020 Women of Excellence Award recipients. The YW has been an important part of the St. Joseph community for 132 years, providing domestic violence and sexual assault services, child care, child abuse and neglect prevention, youth development, and mentoring. The women receiving this award today live out the YWCA St. Joe mission of eliminating racism and empowering women, promoting peace, justice, dignity, and freedom for all. Each of these leaders have worked hard to make the world a better place and serve as models of great public servants for us all. Congratulations to each of you. God bless you, God bless Missouri, and God bless the United States of America. Congratulations to the Women of Excellence nominees and winners. We celebrate today this group of formidable women leaders committed to the betterment of our community. They have demonstrated through their work and lives that women do make a difference. Our awardees are women who have broken glass ceilings and have paved the way for other women and girls to follow in their footsteps to be future leaders. Your accomplishments are an inspiration to us all. Congratulations. Although we can't gather today in person, I want to congratulate each of the 43 residents of my Senate district nominated as Women of Excellence by the YWCA. Each of you are proven leaders and role models in our community. Your passion for helping others is recognized by your peers, coworkers, friends, and family. It is a privilege to join those who know you best and thank you for your service and commitment to our community. You represent the spirit of the YWCA and are a shining example for others to follow. Thanks again for your commitment and dedication. I congratulate you on this prestigious recognition. Hi, I'm Roy Blunt. I love to be in St. Joseph. I wish I could be with you there today as you recognize the recipients of the 19th annual St. Joseph YWCA's Women of Excellence Awards. All of today's nominees are winners. Thank you for being leaders in your schools, in your workplaces, and most importantly in your community. You make a difference every day and this recognition is well earned. Also congratulations to the St. Joe YWCA for 132 years of service in the community in the region. Your efforts toward eliminating racism and empowering women have had a significant impact for Missourians and led to happier, healthier, and safer lives uh, for those you serve. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be part of today's ceremony if it was only virtually I want to congratulate all of the Women in Excellence nominees. Although we were unable to host a nominee reception this year, all of our nominees were able to come to the YWCA to be photographed and record a speech. As well as our Mayor Bill McMurray was able to send letters of congratulation from the City of St. Joseph to all of our nominees. 
We will now hear from Mayor Bill McMurray. Well, hi, this is Mayor Bill McMurray, and I want to add my congratulations to everyone who was nominated for one of the categories in this year's Women of Excellence, sponsored by the YWCA. Our community needs women of excellence as well as men of excellence to make this a better place to live, particularly in these challenging times, you know, where we are wearing masks and doing our best to social distance. I think I am at least six feet away from all of you. I wish we were together, but I do want to thank you for your civic engagement. That, I think, is what makes the big difference in St. Joseph. If we all work together in a positive way to make our city a better place, certainly Women of Excellence makes a tremendous contribution to that uh, effort. So thank you again. Congratulations on being nominated. And congratulations to those of you who will be announced as winners of these esteemed recognitions. I am Leanne Leonard, the other Women of Excellence co-chair. I have the pleasure to announce the first of two Lifetime Achievement recipients. Congratulations to Eileen Dyer as the 2020 Women of Excellence Lifetime Achievement Award in Volunteerism. Serving others has been a priority throughout Eileen's life. Eileen continues to exhibit high energy and passion in all that she does. Those who know her admire the compassion she bestows on others and her servant heart. We are truly grateful for her devotion to the community through her many years and hours of volunteering and serving others. My sincere congratulations to all the nominees and awardees with whom I share this special day of recognition. I am so honored to be part of the 2020 Women of Excellence Recognition Group. Humbled to be honored with all of you for such outstanding contributions to St. Joseph. My heartfelt thanks to the YWCA staff and Women of Excellence Steering Committee to make this recognition so special in spite of our current community health concerns. I'm so grateful for your dedication to this event and my appreciation to so many of you who are watching today who have been my mentors, my co-volunteers, maybe partners in crime, in so many venues around the, over the past 46 years living in St. Joseph. I could start listing names, but would certainly exceed my allotted time and fearful I would miss someone. There are so many of you that should be recognized for your contributions. We are fortunate to be part of such a giving, serving community in St. Joseph. I was recently rereading a favorite book, Tuesdays with Maury, by Mitch Album, when I came across this quote that Maury shared. So many people walk around with a meaningless life. They seem half asleep, even when they are busy doing things that they think are important. This is because they're chasing the wrong things. The way you get meaning into your life is to devote yourself to loving others, devote yourself to your community around you, and devote yourself to creating something that gives you purpose and meaning. I truly think Maury was right. My love and appreciation to our three children, their extraordinary spouses, our seven grandchildren, all of them wanted to be here today to help me celebrate this incredible award. I am deeply, deeply humbled and honored by this recognition. Thank you. I have the pleasure of announcing our second Lifetime Achievement Award winner for 2020 Women of Excellence. That is Sue Wagner. Sue has had a lifelong career as an educator here in St. Joseph for over 45 years. Sue is known by her peers and her former students as a passionate educator who encouraged and supported and nurtured her students. Sue's passion led her to many accomplishments over the years, but none more valued to her than the success of her students. We are honored to recognize Sue Wagner as the awardee of our Lifetime Achievement Award in the workplace. We value her passion and education her devotion to her students and her love for our community. Congratulations, Sue. I'm honored and humbled to be awarded the YWCA Woman of Excellence Lifetime Achievement for Women in the Workplace. 
When I looked up lifetime in the dictionary, I found this definition. The length of time that something functions is useful. Interesting. As I look at the women in this community, I look at all these awesome mentors who daily work, serve, and are extremely useful. When I got the phone call that I was being awarded this honor, I was surprised because I didn't think of all those 45 years as work. I was just going to school. As I was growing up and trying to decide what I should be, the choices were nurses, secretaries, homemakers, and teachers. I chose teaching. I am truly blessed with the family that I have, the parents who valued education and service, also blessed to have worked with colleagues, friends, and to have mentors, supportive parents of my students, and students who daily taught me new things. I am truly grateful. Through teaching, I have had a lifetime of excitement, joy, involvement, creativity, and passion. I love St. Joseph, its people, its architecture, and its history. I love the St. Joseph School District. It is an extension of my family. It has been a pleasure to serve and work. I would like to leave you with this thought. As you are choosing a profession, choose one that you love, and you'll never feel like it's work. Thank you. We will now proceed with other award categories. Emerging leader nominees are Jana Campbell, Amy Quatwani, Anji Lugo, Natalie Makita, and Ashley Tucker. Our 2020 Emerging Leader is Amy Quatwani. Amy has always had a passion for promoting cultural awareness and empowering women and minorities to realize their full potential. She is the previous director of Missouri Western State University's International Program. She currently serves as general counsel for her family's business, St. Joe Inn Hospitality, Inc. She has received numerous awards, including National Student Affairs Professional Organization's Missouri Rising Star Award, the Young Cindy's Adults National Spirit Award, and was named one of the 20 who count by the St. Joseph News Press. Congratulations, Amy. Thank you to the YWCA and the Women of Excellence Committee for selecting me for the Emerging Leader Award. And thank you, thank you, thank you to the person who nominated me. I'm very much appreciative. I would have loved to celebrate with all of you today at our usual luncheon every year, but that's okay. Everyone stay safe. Employer of Excellence nominees are Allison Fisher Brands and Mega Gymnastics. Our 2020 Employer of Excellence is Mega Gymnastics, owned by Mandy Miller. Mega Gymnastics was started by a 20-year-old female entrepreneur, and 10 years later, Mega employs nearly 40 full-time and part-time employees. With a mostly female workforce and customer base, the business is working as a foundation to build up strong, confident female leaders for the future. Many of the full-time staff have grown with the business and have been promoted to additional responsibilities. During the COVID-19 crisis, they were able to quickly adapt and the staff were empowered to take their virtual learning duties so they could continue to be productive and serve the youth of our community. Congratulations, Mandy and Mega Gymnastics. Um, what an honor. I'd like to first of all thank the YWCA and the Women's of Excellence Committee for the opportunity for this award. I consider it a privilege to be the owner of Mega Gymnastics and to be surrounded with my family, friends, and athletes and staff members every day. I'm proud to be a part of this community that supports female entrepreneurs and encourages them to develop leaders within their own business. One of my favorite quotes is, she believed she, she, believed she could, so she did and I try to inspire my staff and students to have that same confidence. Thanks again for this award. Each year, we are pleased to offer a $500 scholarship to a future leader awardee. The scholarship was initiated by the Y Women, a service organization that supported the mission of the YWCA. The members of the Y Women worked tirelessly throughout the years to further the YWCA mission of empowering women and eliminating racism and we hope our future leader nominees will continue their work toward this goal as well. Future leader nominees are Grace Ham, Kylie Meehan, Kayton Reynolds, Julianne Smith, Olivia Smith, 
and Gwyneth Horsham. Our 2020 future leader is Olivia Smith from Central High School. Olivia is an accomplished leader who is highly involved in her high school community. She served as Central High School's senior class president and along with her peers in student government, created an affirmation wall for writing kind words and encouraging messages to students who are struggling. Throughout her high school career, she was active in speech and debate, volleyball, and worked to coordinate events such as the school-wide blood drive. In addition to her many activities, Olivia excels in academics, ranking 29 out of 345 students and earning induction into the National Honor Society. And today, Olivia becomes our 2020 future leader, receiving a $500 scholarship. Congratulations, Olivia. I am so thankful and honored to have been chosen as the recipient of the YWCA Women of Excellence Future Leader Award. I could not have picked better women to have been nominated with, and they are all perfect examples of what excellent women should be like. The YWCA's goals since 1850 have been to empower women and stand against racism and oppression, and I am so honored to have received recognition by an association that so closely mirrors my personal ideals and beliefs. Speaking as a minority person in this community, there is not much representation for people of color, so with receiving this high honor, I hope I can be a positive role model. I want to help other little girls see things like this can happen to people like us. I want to first thank my parents and my family for always pushing me to be my best and giving me all of the opportunities to succeed. I could not have done this without them. I have also been impacted by some other amazing women that I am so grateful for. I am thankful for Katie Schwartz Drowns, my high school speech and debate teacher, who always validated my ideas and helped me become a more open-minded person. I want to thank Christine Prusman, who has always been an amazing support system and empowers me to be my most honest, true self. I want to thank my cousin, Mary Mayo, for always being someone I look up to, trust, and want to be more like every day. I want to thank my counseling staff at Central for nominating me and being people who are always willing to truly listen and give the best advice. And I want to thank my mom, again, for teaching me to be strong and resilient in the toughest of times and know I am worthy of great things. The unwavering love and support from these women has helped me get where I am today, and I am eternally grateful. Thank you so much for this honor, and thank you to all of the women who have made this possible. On to the Women in the Workplace Leadership Award. The nominees are Carissa Barron, Julie Gaddy, Jennifer Gentry, Jeannie Hambrick, Griselda Ortiz, Amy Ryan, Jennifer Stanton. Our 2020 Women in the Workplace Leadership winner is Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan has her MBA and she is the Senior Vice President Team Leader at Commerce Bank. She has been in banking for 12 years and has risen rapidly within the company due to her professionalism, knowledge, and management skills. In 2019, she was recognized by Ingram's Magazine as one of the region's top leaders under the age of 40. She is considered the go-to person within her organization and is described as an overachiever with the passion of helping youth and those in need. She was instrumental in establishing Pivotal Point Transitional Housing and has served in leadership roles on numerous community committees and nonprofit boards. Our 2020 Women in the Workplace Leadership Awardee, Amy Ryan. Congratulations, Amy. Uh, I just want to say thank you for the recognition of being nominated and selected um, in the Women of Excellence nominations. And it's such an honor because I know there are some other very amazing women that have also been nominated in this. And I don't really feel deserving up against some of them. Um, I want to say thank you to my husband and my family for supporting me and always being there to help push me. And thank you to my boss, Corky Marcourt, and to Commerce Bank um, for allowing me the flexibility in my role to be involved in the community and be able to give back. And most of all, thank you to the YW for this wonderful event and for all that you do for women in our community. So, thank you. Our Women in Volunteerism nominees are Heather Deckard, Mary Herzog, Kathy Hodges, Lynn Hudson, Patricia Trisha Steinbecker, Brianna Sullivan, and Whitney Zogby. Our 2020 Women in Volunteerism is Lynn Hudson. 
Lynn Hudson's volunteer efforts have successfully led a number of organizations to achieve excellence. As president of the St. Joseph Eastside Lions Club, the club was recognized with the Club of Excellence Award and became one of, the, one of two model Missouri clubs based on their donations and support of many local agencies. As Toastmasters Club President, she earned Distinguished Toastmasters Award, which is the highest individual award, and her club received the President's Distinguished Award. Her dedicated volunteerism of nearly 20 years serves as a remarkable and inspiring model for others. Congratulations, Lynn. Thank you very much for this recognition. It's an honor to be nominated with so many impressive women. I give credit for my success to the members of my organizations who are always willing to do whatever it takes to promote our missions of education, literacy, science, history, and community service through their time, talents, donations, and scholarships. I would like to thank Sharon Kosick for nominating me and thank you again for this award. Our Women in the Workplace nominees are Lori Brown, Lauren Catron, Lisa Dubb, Amelia Fortmeyer, Jenny Geminez, Precious Love Hayes, Beth Sharp, Rosemary Swafford. Our 2020 Women in the Workplace is Lauren Catron. Lauren is the Marketing and Communication Specialist for Hilliard. She assists with new product launches and both internal and external communications. She serves on the Hilliard Social Committee that focuses on employee appreciation, as well as the Hilliard Heart Team Committee, which works on several nonprofits, which works with several nonprofits to meet community needs. In addition to her work and responsibility, Lauren serves her community as well. She was the Junior League President this year and is Commissioner and Vice President of the St. Joseph Planning Commission. Congratulations, Lauren. Um, I am truly honored to be nominated for the Women of Excellence. It's such a privilege to be among so many amazing women in our community. I would like to thank the Junior League of St. Joseph for the nomination. This organization has given me so many opportunities and allowed me to grow in so many ways. Thank you to my employer, Hilliard. Thank you especially to the Hilliard family and my boss, Joe Kauf, for understanding how important family is and allowing the flexibility needed for a working mom. I'm proud to be a part of Team Hilliard. Thank you to my parents for always believing in me. And thank you to my husband, Drew. Your love and support means the world to me and I wouldn't be able to do this without you. Our new category this year, Women in Entrepreneurship, the nominees are Renee Navarro Force, Laura Wyeth, Abigail O'Malley, Bobby Joe Hausman, and Susan Campbell. Our 2020 Women in Entrepreneurship is Laura Wyeth. For 20 years, Laura has tirelessly worked to revitalize and promote the downtown area through sales and leasing of buildings, office spaces, and retail space and loft apartments. Through her business as a realtor, she has worked to create her vision of turning vacant buildings into restaurants, businesses, and loft living. She has volunteered her time by serving on the Downtown First Board and organized fundraisers. Her current project is to start an alleyway art, green space, and lighting project in the core alleyways of downtown. In recognition of her vision and accomplishments, she received the Realtor Who Makes a Difference Award for her significant downtown improvements. Congratulations, Laura. Thank you. I am honored to be nominated with this group of amazing women. It's especially poignant to be recognized for the work that I love, that I wake up every day excited to do. Thank you to the YWCA for recognizing the women in all of these categories and continuing a long history of empowering women and eliminating racism in our community. I want to thank my family, my husband, Max Wyeth, and our three children, Max, Betsy, and Alexandra, my dear mother, Betty Stover, my father, Alfred Stover, who passed away in 2011. He was an attorney at Light and Power for most of my childhood and really inspired my love of downtown. I especially want to thank my sister, uh, Lynn Stover. She's my best friend. Um, we have been a team in real estate for going on 20 years, and she shares my passion and dedication to making St. Joseph the best it can be. 
lastly, I'd like to thank my PEO sisters, Chapter EE, who nominated me, who have followed me through this journey and supported me in every way. They are each, each a joy to me. 2020 has gotten off to a rough start, but I am optimistic that the second half of the year and on, we are gonna build on the legacy and the five years of momentum that we've had, and we will just continue to grow and prosper. Thank you so much. For the last award of our program, I'm honored to announce the White Woman of Merit. In 2002, the YWCA Board of Directors established a special award, the White Woman of Merit, for a woman who throughout the years has provided dedicated service and support to the YWCA. The award is presented each year at our annual meeting in April. Well, we weren't able to have our annual meeting in April this year. Uh, we'll have that later on this year, uh, but I still am pleased to announce our 2020 White Woman of Merit is Kathleen O'Connor. Kathleen has served in various capacities for the YWCA. She has been a table captain for Women of Excellence on several occasions. Kathleen has served on the board of directors for six years, and the last two of those years, she was chairwoman of our board. Kathleen is a registered nurse. She retired in 2018 from Missouri Western State University after a 35 plus year career. Kathleen has been an anchor in our community from her career at Missouri Western to the service she has provided the YWCA and many other organizations. We truly appreciate the service that Kathleen has provided. Thank you. I would like to thank the YWCA for honoring me with this year's 2020 Woman of Merit Award. When I think back on previous recipients of this award, I am truly humbled to be included among their ranks. I had long known in my years in St. Joseph of the wonderful contributions the YWCA made to the community. It's a very fiscally responsible organization that uses donor dollars for the good of the community. And that cannot happen without very hardworking employees and hard work on the part of volunteers. So when I took the position on the board, I knew it was time to roll up my sleeves and get to work. And um, the board members uh, all worked very strongly together. I was fortunate to serve in leadership roles on the board and learned so much more about the wonderful organization. It was my distinct pleasure to serve. Someone once said that if you're considering giving of your time, talent, or treasure to an organization, that you should ask yourself, what is the impact of this organization in the community? Or in other words, what would happen if that organization was not here? And when I applied that to the YWCA, it was clear that it would be devastating to the community if we did not have the YWCA it would leave a huge gaping hole. And so I was very pleased to serve and, and with all the involvement that I had in the YWCA. It's critically important in St. Joseph. I'm appreciative for the opportunity that I had to serve and I'm humbled to be recognized as the YWCA Woman of Merit. Thank you. I've probably had just a few people who ever really looked at me and asked me what it felt like to be me. And what that does when you sit down with people and allow them to share their dreams and their failures and their pain. It is the freedom of being who you are. It's the freedom of releasing your full potential. It's a feeling of not feeling like you're living in shame. It's a feeling of not being embarrassed. And every time I'm terrified to walk into a room and speak up, I have to remind myself that once again, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. I want to add my personal congratulations and thanks to all of our nominees and award recipients. Thank you to Sarah Beth Myers for sharing your professional journey, passion, and accomplishments. Our efforts to make a difference and the impact can truly affect many. Finally, I want to thank our sponsors who partnered with the YWCA in recognition and celebration of women of excellence in our community. We want to recognize our underwriting sponsors. 
Ameripac, Commerce Bank, Hilliard, Mosaic, Nottoway Valley Bank, and Harold P. Dugdale Trust through U.S. Bank. Our in-kind sponsors, KQ2, Portraits by Long, Every Last Detail, Brienne, Dr. Jonathan Amsbacker, Catherine's Distinctive Gifts, Kristen's Coin and Jewelry, and Missouri Western State University. We truly appreciate you all assisting us. For those of you who have donated to our event and to the YWCA, please note that gifts of $100 or more are eligible for a domestic violence 50% tax credit. Thanks for your participation and generous contributions. In closing, as board chair, I would like to personally thank Tammy Killen, her team at the YWCA, the board of directors, and the Women of Excellence Committee and volunteers that work so very hard on this event every year. Now for one last surprise, let's hear from some of our community members and supporters of the YWCA of St. Joseph. Why give to the YW? Because we know that the YW is not only a safe haven for victims, it's a place of hope and encouragement. For some it's home, for others it's an opportunity. You not only can begin to heal, you can become strengthened. The YWCA has been a staple in our community for 132 years. Your support for this outstanding organization is powerful. It makes you part of the team. And when you know you have a great team, anything's possible.